Okay, we are doing Q and A because I have more cues on this channel in the comments than I can handle with typing out a bunch of answers. So I figured I would do a video for you guys to explore some of my thoughts as well. Because sometimes when I type stuff out, it's a quick answer, but uh, talking can give me a, a good opportunity to sound out some of the thoughts that I have in regards to the question. The first one actually is from AL10. Uh, says, are we all saying good boy or is it just me getting carried away? And this was on one of the training videos for this guy here. And I say good boy a lot or good girl or something along those lines. It's a habit. It's one of those things that you kind of do because um, it, it communicates a good feeling. It communicates approval or it communicates appreciation. And um, for something to write this is really interesting to me because if you're watching you're wa and, and saying something like this, you're watching enough to feel like you're kind of there. You're kind of really hoping for the best. So I'm super appreciative for this comment and the question uh, about, are we all saying good boy? And I certainly hope so. I hope that um, everybody who's watching is cheering him on, who's saying uh, something very positive, you know, about him, maybe not directly to him, but you feel like maybe you are saying it to him. And the really cool thing about it actually is that if you are doing it, you're creating an amazing habit that is going to work for many other horses. Um, if, if you're working with them and you constantly praise them and you say, good boy, or good girl, or good job, or whatever, that kind of stuff will absolutely um, help. That will help you. It will reaffirm the things that you're doing that you've hopefully said to the horse, you know, do this, do that. And they do it. And you're like, that's great. I really like that. So, um, or, and then the second part, is it just me getting carried away? No, it's not you getting carried away. You're not carried away at all. You're maybe carried away on the process of, in a good way of, of doing this horse training. I really like this question. So, um, I want to say, I, I'm really glad that you are. I hope everybody is. Uh, I see a lot of thumbs up on that comment. So thanks for writing it. It's a good one. Uh, next question by out of time. So did you do all the work he needed from the vet in his stall? Yes. All the work was done right here in the paddock. Um, there was nowhere really to go for that because you don't need to. Uh, everything was done in one place. They were done in about an hour and a half, two hours or so. And uh, that was that. Um, and he seems a bit more mellow since gelded, but was he always kind of a mellow to start with, wasn't he? I don't think he's any more or less mellow or changed from the gelding process. Uh, there was somebody that asked, you know, how, how are you going to keep all of this gentling after you geld him? And I thought, wow, is that a thing? Do horses get gelded and then they turn into bad horses or unhappy horses or untrusting horses? And I did, I talked to my vet about that and he says, well, does he look like he's bothered? And he'd been doing a fantastic job of managing any pain that he might feel. And I said, no, he looks fine. You know, he looks okay. He says, well, that's when you get these problems when you come along with somebody that does sort of a bit of a hack job or doesn't do it with enough uh, pain relief for the process. And the horse can become quite bothered by that and in such a case there is a chance of losing that gently um as for whether or not he's more or less mellow i don't think he's either i think that coming off of uh tranquilizers uh, uh medical procedure being in pain uh being uncomfortable uh possibly for it um a lot of times when horses get wormed or they get shots they'll be a little bit down uh so if that's the case um you know, that he's more mellow, You're, he appears more mellow. It might be because of that. I've always found him to be quite a quiet character. He's not a very loud horse. Last night he was a little bit with some bear or something like that. He was trotting back and forth, which was good. See some life in him. Um, but overall, he's quite a mellow horse. So it's quite nice. Get a lot of questions about that. We'll come to that in a little bit. Uh, I got a question. Would it be safe? to let him in the arena with only the boys. Uh, I do believe it would be safe to let him in the arena with the boys. Uh, they can work things out. I don't expect him to be too much trouble. I don't think he's you know, the type of horse that's going to be a fighter or need to do anything particular in that regard. I think he'll probably play. He's young, he's four. So he's got uh, a, 
a lot of socialization to do. Um, but the only thing that I would worry about is that he has lice or had lice. He has definitely nits, which are uh, lice eggs. And sooner or later, those will probably uh, hatch and uh, turn into lice again. So you have to delouse them again. So once the delousing period is over, while it's not dangerous, I don't want lice going to all the other horses. So that's why we're waiting. A uh, question uh, that I get once in a while. Do they have a grassy area they can graze on? Well, um, we live in a forest here. This is a forested place. I am working on more grassy areas, um, but we don't tend to let them out just to roam around on grassy areas unless we bring them out. The grassy areas are the yard, essentially. Here, uh, over in front of the uh, small barn, over in front of the arena, and along all the sides of the arena, and a little bit at the back. So yes, we do have grassy areas, but we don't tend to just let them go roam around. Uh, which is fine. I know I know quite a few people that, that worry about whether horses should have more grass. Grass is very good for them, that's true, uh, but they get a really good high quality hay all the time, so I don't tend to worry about them too much. Okay, um, how tall is he? And uh, he is he is as tall as he'll get. Well, he's only four years old, so he should get taller. I don't know how tall he is yet. I haven't put the stick on him, uh, but I would guess probably 15. 15-1, something like that. Um, uh, next question from Ida was, uh, what was the noise that he made when you guys were standing on the grassy area? Uh, the grassy area, the first time I brought him on, I made a video, and uh, we came out to this little grassy area here, and uh, he made a noise about 25 minutes into the video or so, and he um, essentially blew his nose, <laughs> had a little sigh. There's nothing big, nothing exciting. Just uh, normal breathing out. And it'd make a funny noise inside of their nose as it sort of rumbles a little bit. Stuff like that. Um, I think I just heard a shot. I just heard a shot there. Anyhow, uh, Out of Time says, he is looking dark, more black for some reason. Or is it just me? It is uh, the camera, actually. If you guys are watching and it's very, very bright, the camera will try to expose or show the uh, for the brighter parts of the picture so that they're not blown out super white. So it'll bring the darker colors darker. That's just the limitations of one of my cameras uh, and plenty of cameras for that matter. Um, so if I had more money to get a better camera, it had a higher or bigger dynamic range. It's not worth it for this production, so no problem. Um, uh, next question uh, about uh, Gracie. It was on great one of Gracie's videos. What are the things you have mentioned about a horse not having things early in their lives that they are missing? Now, uh, it's an interesting question because I talk about horse behaviors an awful lot. And one of the things that uh, I've commented on her for is a lack of socialization with other horses, the ability to learn from their herd mates or their parents or brothers, sisters, whatever, the, you know, everybody, every other horse that's around them. Horses that get in, put into isolation more, uh, don't have enough time to, you know, run around with a herd and get kicked or do the kicking or get bit or do the biting or whatever, become, I consider, emotionally and, and uh, mentally stunted for later. Um, and then there will be plenty of people who will blame it on the breed, but in fact, what happens is a lot is that the um, the breed defines how the human treats the horse, and in turn, it's a cyclical problem where, say, for example, we would take Arabians. Oh, they're crazy. You should keep Arabians alone so they don't cause problems with other people and, or other horses, and then you just leave them kind of alone, and then they're kind of crabby with other horses, and then... Ah, see, look, the horse is crazy, you know. And so that cycle of essentially mental destruction, as far as I'm concerned, I'd like my horses to be well socialized. Um, and, and it ends up defining the breed. Thoroughbreds, Arabians, those are the two that get a bad rap. Um, whereas you have draft horses or maybe quarter horses or, you know, some of the calmer breeds, um, they get to go out and play with other horses a lot more. So they get to break down those social barriers and 
get along better with other horses because they have more time and practice doing it. And then the nuttier ones don't, and then they get nuttier. So that's the biggest thing uh, that I think a lot of horses miss. And then a good, solid, uh, happy education. Uh, something that isn't going to be traumatic, isn't going to be something that's going to uh, affect them the rest of their lives, where they'll have some kind of trauma happen through poor training practice, poor educating by somebody, and they carry that forward, forward because they don't get past it. Nobody pushes them past that weird fear that ever, whatever they got that got put into them. Um, so there's, it's a big deal to, if you're going to train a horse and you get them afraid of something, get them past it. Don't leave them there. Uh, if you can help it, um, I believe it can affect them far into the future. Okay. Next question. Um, it's a good one. Mr. Unknown says, uh, how did you choose him? Uh, or how do you choose Oscar? Why him, but not other horse and what made you think you can work with this horse well there were only two horses at the time the other one was a mare that was probably two to four weeks away from foaling uh she was much older um, according to the seller and just wasn't within the parameters that i was able to probably effectively do much for uh, he was a four-year-old stallion um seemed relatively calm very nervous uh touchy couldn't get near him but he didn't try to attack he wasn't trying to do anything uh, that appeared dangerous at the time if wasn't if he wasn't pressed or cornered or trapped and so i think that i can work with just about any horse it might not be to the level that i might be able to work with another horse but i don't believe there's any other that i can't do something with um so what made me think i can work with him is just simply because he's a horse um in addition he was quite calm and quiet and, and good uh, overall, uh, although skittery. I wasn't too worried about skittery. I was quite sure I could get him past that and have him trust me enough to be cool with it. Uh, so what made me choose him? Well, he was one out of two. Um, and uh, the other one wasn't, wasn't an option, really, uh, for multiple reasons. Okay, Joyce says, um, I was reading about Tolton today, a gate specific to Icelandic horses due to a gene mutation. Are you familiar with it? And has Fluffer Nutter ever done it it's a rear left rear left front left rear left front right right rear right gate really amazing to see i think she has done it i tried to get some slow-mo uh, and i was going to present that but then uh, all kinds of other things came up and i didn't um but yeah i think she's done it um i think it's a neat gate um yeah a lot of people are really attracted to it it's what attracts people to icelandics so um uh, norma says what's up with the regular main tail forelock combing i don't know um good question what is with up with regular main tail forelock combing uh, the grooming that gets done around here is relatively minimal um if a horse is looking particularly <laughs> and this is very subjective uh rough then um They'll get their main tail and forelock combed out and cleaned up and stuff like that. Uh, and this was on a video, I think, with Lena, cleaning of Lena. And uh, and she, you know, she, all like all the horses here, they get a bath once in a while, but mainly in the summertime because uh, it's hot sometimes and they're sweating and you just want to kind of give them a good wash. He's down. And... Um, but it's not overly regular unless we're riding. If we're riding, then definitely give them a good brush and make sure sand and stuff like that is off their body. Other than that, generally let them kind of do their own thing. Uh, Gail says, is Wildy a more docile breed in general or is Sir Wild just different? I'm going to make a whole video uh, about this idea of um, how horses, how many horses have been uh, probably... I don't know about many, but probably quite a few horses have been inaccurately portrayed as uh, flighty, terrified uh, animals uh, due to you know human intervention, um, some poor training, some very poor rounding up practices, things like that. Um, he is. I don't think it's his breed that makes him docile; it's his experiences that make him docile. As I was trying to answer the question previous about. Um, socialization and experiences in life. I think that um, 
rather than breed its experience uh, in life. And I don't think he's ever really experienced a bad human come along that's given him a lot of trouble. Um, and as such, he's going to... Horses are very trusting, usually. They usually would like to make a friend. They don't really want to have conflict. And so you can really um, have a lot of luck if you too are feeling like you don't need to dominate and give a lot of trouble and just be a good friend for the most part. But at the same time, make sure to keep everybody safe, which means that, yes, you are the boss or the leader. Um, so do I think he's just different? I think there's a part of him that is a little old soulish in a way, I guess, uh, ahead of his years, perhaps. Um, but again, he's got a great environment. He's grown up with all of his buddies, for sure. Uh, he's probably had a little bit of human interaction that hasn't been bad and, and is continuing on till now. But I do think that there are many horses out there that are inaccurately, like their their personality is inaccurately portrayed because the people who are approaching them are possibly not meeting what they need. Uh, not always. It's hard. I'm not going to judge any situation out there, but I do think that there is an inordinate amount of uh, drama that I don't believe is necessary. Uh... Last question, because it's getting long. It's a uh, most recent. So I worked my way up from the last four days. Uh, Patricia says, would it have been easier to do with him standing? Then he might drop for you. Easier to clean him that way. This was on a video where I cleaned Luke's sheath a little bit uh, for fun. Uh, so yes, it is much easier to um, clean a, a gelding's sheath when they're standing, especially if they drop, because um, you can then make sure to get everything kind of clean. But this was really just a one-off sort of see if I could do it for one and two, just to clean off some outside stuff that I could see right away. It wasn't about doing a thorough clean. So good question. Uh, it's true. It is much easier, or probably much easier as that's my very first time ever doing a sheath cleaning while lying down uh, to do it when they're standing up. So that's it. I'm going to finish Q&A for now. I'll probably do a part two, three, and four um, because... Uh, there are a lot of questions. Thank you, everybody, for contributing questions and comments. All the support and amazing encouragement you guys are providing for the channel, for the horses, for me. Um, it's it's really nice. It's really it's wonderful to read. It takes a lot of time, uh, but that's okay. I really appreciate everybody's time that you put into uh, contributing and supporting, <laughs> as I've said, and encouraging. It's wonderful. So I'll see you guys in the next Q&A. And I'll try to get through another 20 questions in that one. So bye for now.